everybody. I'm Azza. I come from Alexandria, Egypt. So, have anyone been there before? Raise your hands. Yeah. Great. Then you probably know to take the best tour in my city, you have to go from Qaid Bay Castle to Muntaza Palace. And for this tour, of course, you will need to take our famous yellow and black taxi. <laughs> well, I can assure you the enjoyment of, the, of this uh, tour, unless the disaster happens and the taxi driver decides to refuel. My advice to you then is to add an extra hour over the two hours journey for a new site, which is the petrol station. OK, on one of my boring tours to this site, I actually had a conversation with a taxi driver on why are all these crowds here. And this day, I realized the, the big problem. It was the energy crisis that hit the world in 2008 when the oil prices soared up to $150 a barrel. Well, as the, the amount of petrol we use, we consume in the Arab world is increasing. This is getting the problem actually worse. And since prices are not going to decrease anytime soon, then it was clear to me to find a solution. And this solution should be a sustainable one. So, and built on my annoying curiosity, I started searching on how people try to actually to solve this problem. And here we go. We have two approaches of solution, the political approach and the scientific approach. Well, for the political approach, <laughs> what did policymakers and governments do? They were just trying, they were aiming to reduce the petrol consumption by attempting to reduce subsidies. However, subsidy reduction is considered to be a hard process to fully implement. And that's how they discuss it. Well, that's how always policy, policy and policymakers do. But scientists, but the scientists have introduced many solutions, like finding renewable energy resources, like wind energy, solar energy, geothermal, and biofuel. I found it really interesting to work on a project that converts rubbish into fuel. And by looking to this, we find that the biofuel production is majorly produced from municipal solid waste. And many municipal solid waste like we have biogenic and non-biogenic waste. Well, for the biogenic waste, people, uh, consumers now recycle more biogenic like uh, food scraps, yard remains, but still the non-biogenic waste recycling rates are low. So uh, although this non-biogenic waste has higher uh, heat content, which makes it actually a better fuel for generating electricity. I focus more on plastics because they are hardly degradable material. They are, have this high heat content, but they are also made up of uh, light hydrocarbons like ethylene and uh, uh, propylene. They are major hydrocarbons in many petrochemical industries, and especially the hydrocarbon fuel production. So I started searching on how this conversion process from plastic waste to biofuel could occur. Well, it's time to use what we have. And we have lots of plastic waste nowadays. It reached about 14.3% among municipal solid waste generated in 2010. So that was the point that grabbed my attention towards using plastic as a sustainable source of energy. So what we basically do to convert this plastic into hydrocarbon fuel is uh, catalytic cracking of the polyethylene plastic. Uh, that was the type I, I actually experimented. Uh, however, many plastics are being recycled with the same process. But why catalytic cracking, not, for example, thermal cracking or steam cracking? It's simply because catalytic crack in catalytic cracking, you just use a catalyst with the, uh, with the plastic and you don't need that much energy to operate the process. So you save energy, which means you save money. And by focusing on this, we, we, we should look at the catalyst. The catalyst is a very important chemical that 
accelerates the chemical reaction and for catalytic cracking for plastic, uh, plastic polymers, the, the zeolite catalyst actually proved to be the best cracking catalyst, but it's a very expensive one. So I hypothesized that using a new cheaper catalyst, having nearly the same chemical composition as zeolite catalyst could actually give better results or even the same hydrocarbon efficient products. And on this basis, I designed my experiments. And I kept searching for one month for the best facility to conduct these experiments. And after three months, I founded the Egyptian Petroleum Research Institute. It's based in Cairo. So I traveled many times to get the acceptance and permits uh, to conduct my experiments there. People were really great and they were really helpful. But I can never forget this day when I got accepted. It was on the 24th of January 2011. And I never knew then that I will pause my work for a whole month because there, is, there was no internet access, no experiments, and of course, I was not able to travel from Alex to Cairo. So, after posing this month, I actually had to take the most important decision in my life, which was leaving everything behind, leaving my schools, my studies, everything for a whole month, just to get prepared for a national science fair competition. And for those who don't know the science fair competition, it's mainly a competition between high school students bringing their innovative ideas into research projects to solve their surroundings pro uh, problems. So I was preparing to participate in the national competition and I traveled to Cairo. I conducted my experiments and that new catalyst proved me right. Well, that cheaper catalyst actually worked more efficient under lower temperatures and the products were mainly gaseous and liquid products like uh, uh, methane and ethane they, uh, and the liquid products were mainly tracked naphtha. The products were not really unique or new. They're just uh, the fuel that we use to uh, drive our cars, cook our food. It was not new, but the new, the new thing was finding this catalyst that makes the process um, more feasible. It was not about reinventing energy, it was about be, uh, making this energy uh, cheaper and more uh, efficient. So, after conducting these experiments, I conducted an economical study for my project based on the total amount of plastic waste generated in Egypt. Well, it reached about one million ton into, uh, in 20, 2011, and if we implemented this project with this new catalyst, we can get uh, a total uh, amount of uh, hydrocarbon products like gases and liquid hydrocarbons of uh, total added value that could reach $163 million per year. And this research granted me the special donated prize uh, from um, the European Union contest for young scientists. I had uh, a week visit in JET. It's the Durian European Tourist, one of the biggest experiments, uh, fusion experiments in Europe and uh, over the globe. And here uh, and there, I had the chance to meet great scientists doing great research in fusion. But what really impressed me in JET was finding students, researchers from all over Europe doing their fusion experiments, discussing their ideas, their projects, their experiments under one roof towards one aim which is sustainable energy production. And by answering on the ADI's question on how do I see the scientific research in the Arab world, well, I really wish to see a research institute like JET in all, over, uh, in all the Arab countries where students and researchers, also investors, could cooperate to have uh, a final product to bring the fascinating, uh, the fascinating uh, scientific research in the Arab world into huge investments that could actually uh, solve our problems. And from all what I have been through, my experiments, my experience, my project, and even go going to the European contest, I can tell you this. The only way out of all of our problems in the Arab world is to have the, uh, is to take scientific research as an approach of solving our problems because Policy doesn't work. In my opinion, it doesn't work. Also, having a very powerful network between researchers, students, and investors from all over the region, conducting their professional research and 
also having this facility, the, the good facility to conduct this research, to bring actually the, our ideas into huge investments, they could really solve our problems. And now, by implementing such projects, I can guarantee you a lovely visit to my city in only two hours with no more nightmares. Thank you.